we rolling? We're rolling. Are uh, we filming or are we audio? Both. Is, both. Everything. It's a podcast, man. But we're doing audio because we're on Apple Podcasts. Podcast. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That, that, got me really, that cool. means people don't have to watch these YouTube videos. Yeah. No, they can just sit in their car. Does that mean I can like fiddle with a pen while we do No, because no, there's still going to be people watching. Uh, <laughs> it's still going to drive me nuts. Yeah, and everyone watching. Um, welcome thanks, back. Thanks for listening though, guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Welcome back, NCR Podcast. Uh, this is a new segment we're doing. It's going to be called the NCR Podcast AMRAP 30, where we delve into one specific topic. We try to stay on topic. We hit it. We hit it hard and fast. Hit it hard. And then, yeah, we're still going to have our long, ongoing podcast where we chat a lot, but these are just different episodes where if you have like a 30-minute commute, you can hammer it out and get some information. Yeah. Sound about right? That sounds great. Three, I two, love one, go. Three, two, one, go. So today, we're talking performance nutrition. Performance nutrition. Awesome. So let's get started. What have you guys tried? What have you done? Strictly like in CrossFit trying to be really fit. Um, a lot. Like we've, I think we've experimented with a lot of things. Um, it's funny, like you say performance nutrition, I, I don't see a whole different, like I don't see it very different from just normal nutrition. I mean, it'll, if, it, in my case, it'll change a little bit in terms of quantities, but um, I don't really fuel myself that much differently um, throughout the year than I do when I compete. Uh, what I've experimented with and what has really worked for me um, is the zone diet. I mean, um, I've tried it for for uh, like very to a T for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and I found that that was a great uh, a great way to number one kind of have a, a good understanding of what you're eating and how you're eating in terms of uh, mac- macronutrients and mm-hmm. what you're putting in your body, um, and having a focus on like real food. And number two is just quantities. Yeah. Um, and that was, I think, the, the most benefit I got from actually following the zone diet was, uh, was more uh, learning than performance right. or the way I was looking. Um, like just learning about that stuff and going through that diet would just helped me understand what goes on uh, when you're eating right or mm-hmm. wrong. Um, but so... I mean, nutrition is it's such a weird subject, right, Raz? Like, it's just like you have you have different mentalities on, on everything and, and different, uh, you know, diets coming up here it's and there. everywhere now. Yeah, it is, man. So and much I, of it. And I think the, the whole, I think what's really uh, the same thing in all diets or all, like, kind of nutritional fads is just n- eating real foods and knowing, yeah. knowing how much you're eating of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think whether you're doing the, the, the zone diet or RP strength or whatever or following the macros, it all comes down to the same thing. And um, that's why I like the zone uh, a little bit better than the other ones. And I've tried the macro diet as well. Yeah. Um, it's essentially the same thing. It just doesn't give you a little bit. It, it, I didn't have the same uh, focus on eating the right foods. Right. Yeah. Let's just explain like zone diet for yeah. those people who don't know. What exactly is it? Is it a macro diet? Is it a car- like calorie based diet? Yes. Yeah. So um, it is a, so the zone diet is a, the diet um, that was made up by Dr. Barry Sears. So I'll, I'll do it very, very quickly. It's, it was, it's a, it's basically an anti-inflammatory diet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, it's called the zone because it's every, um, it, it's basically you want to be in the zone. Okay, so in, in the zone diet, you have blocks. Okay. You have to eat a certain amount of blocks a day. And you'll, you'll have your prescription, you'll have a prescription, I'll have mine. And it depends on uh, body weight. Lean uh, body mass. Lean, yeah, sorry, lean body mass, uh, size, male, female, all that stuff. And there's mm-hmm. a calculation to be done on that. And then from there, uh, you have a certain amount of blocks to eat a day. And the, the whole premise of the zone diet is that everything is, is in balance. So it's, it's a way of keeping your hormones in balance. Right. So in a block, there is seven grams of protein, nine grams of carbs, and three grams of fat. Right. And Dr. Barry Sears did all the research for you. He did all the science and he figured it out that in that block, that is the ratio of all three macronutrients that you need to keep your hormones. Ideal hormonal response. I, exactly, equal. Right. So that's like, in a nutshell, like we could talk about this for, for all day and mm-hmm. you could read up on this for, for hours and hours and days, but essentially, hey Jen, what's up? We're live. We're live. 
going to podcast. She'll be on the podcast. Yeah, one hundred percent. Crossfit doctor, absolutely. Okay, so um, it's basically we can talk about it for days, and, and you know you can research it all uh, for, for to, to give you guys an example of something that wouldn't work with his own diet, like eating an apple, like right. that. That would not. That's just strictly a carbohydrate. It would not elicit an ideal hormonal response. So the, the zone diet would prescribe that you eat an apple with, what is it, like three almonds? Four or six yeah, almonds? So one, al- one apple is, like, is two blocks. Yeah. So We're getting into specifics, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. just to give you guys a, a, an idea of yeah. like what would not work with the zone diet. Every so time you eat, you're eating protein, fat, carbohydrates. Yeah. So it's about having that balance at every meal, snack, etc. You're exactly. always having a balance of each of those macronutrients, and that's what elicits the ideal hormonal response. Exactly. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. And so, and with that, it, it, if you eat um, those blocks properly with the right percentage or not percentage, but grams of carbohydrate, fats, and, and protein, you will at the end of the day have a uh, calorie intake of 40, 30, 30. So that means 40% of your calories will come from carbohydrates, 30 from protein, and another 30 from fat. From fat. Huh. Yeah. And that's a bit against the grain from what a lot of people, especially in North America, do, right? We're used to much higher carbohydrate diets and we've been taught forever that fat's bad. Yeah. How does that 40% carbohydrates, was that what you were intaking when you did the zone? Yeah, absolutely. How did you feel with performance though? Sorry, not 40. No, I I actually reduced that. You went lower. Yeah, so with the the zone diet, Actually, yeah, if you want to talk about performance, like the yeah. first thing that, that, uh, that someone would do after following the, the zone diet to a T, um, and, and this is kind of the first um, adjustment that we, we tell people to, to try is um, increase your fat intake. If you see that your performance isn't, isn't going in the right direction or you don't, you know, you're not seeing the, you don't have enough energy mm-hmm. and you're following the, the blocks and you, you, know, you don't know what's going on, increase your fat intake, okay. Instead of increasing the overall blocks throughout the day, so that means you're you're just um, you're increasing the, the amount of calories that you are intaking from fat. Mm-hmm. And the reason behind that is just that's uh, common for like elite CrossFitters, mm-hmm. so or, or like even competitive CrossFitters, right? So um, you turn fat into your prime energy source. Yeah, and then when I do that, I, I triple the amount of fats that I, that I go in, through my diet, and that, that comes back to like, you know, like a 50% calorie intake from fat and 25, 25, or something like that. It mm-hmm. plays around with the percentage. So you're not actually reducing your carbohydrates, but because you're increasing your fat, that number is lower. The percentage yeah. is right. Yeah, yeah, sorry, oh. the, the, the overall, yeah, sorry, the overall intake of carbohydrates throughout the day stays the same. You're just increasing the fat. I'm increasing the fat, so the percentage of calories that I'm intaking from cal- from carbs mm-hmm. are just lower. Interesting. Yeah. So you're still eating the same grams of carbohydrates that you would be, but you're just Correct. increasing the, car- the fat. It. Yeah. So would, let's say, for example, we have an athlete whose goal is weight gain. They yeah. want to get stronger. Is that, the zone prescription for that would be increased fat? Um, no, it would be, so to start, it would be... Yeah, these blocks. Just in general. Yeah, because... The, the zone diet is a, is a calorie restrictive diet just to, to begin because right. we can agree that most of the people in our society are just a little bit on the heavier side, right? Yep. So this diet is essentially, it will lean you out right away. As soon as you get on it, you'll lean out and then from there you, you can adjust. You have to do it for at least like three weeks mm-hmm. to a month to really get a good idea of how it's going to affect your body. And then from there you can adjust. So uh, you can either increase the blocks, mm-hmm. the overall blocks, but not by like five, right? You don't right. go from like 15 to 20 blocks and you increase by one block. Right. Um, and then from there, you, you gauge it on your performance and how you feel. And then if um, if you you feel like you need more energy, you can increase the fats from there. Right. Yeah. So you can, the thing, the whole thing about that is like, without getting into like too specific, it's just very simple. And that's why mm-hmm. I love the zone diet. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I recommend it to, to a lot of people. It's like once you, do it, mm-hmm. read up on it, understand the benefits of it and understand what a block is and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It's so easy after that. It's just like, you know, you can add in a block here, take out a block, mm-hmm. you know, try it out. And then you can see throughout the day, like, oh, it's very easy to think like, did I eat enough? How many blocks did I eat? Right. It's just a very easy way to understand how much you're eating. Right. Yeah. So let's talk that. So yeah. the fat and the carbs. Mm-hmm. That diet is, do you find, and you, you probably guess, for those guys who know, you're on the level one seminar staff, you guys, this is the diet you guys talk about, mm-hmm. correct? So you've probably heard a lot of feedback from people. 
do you find, because some people might be more fat sensitive. So like me personally, I recently tried the RP mm -hmm. stuff. And what I found with that is that they're actually different. The carbs are way higher. They really blow up the carbs. I was on like a mass template. Mm -hmm. It's like 450 grams of carbs a day. Like it was crazy. But I found personally, when I tried to increase the fat, I had like digestive issues and stuff like that. What would you say to someone who's in that world, strictly talking zone diet? Man, I, I'd say the same. I'd say the same thing to everyone else. Like, nutrition is very personalized. Like, it, different people will react differently to, to different things. And it's right. like, no one in this world has really figured it out. And I think that's the problem. I think so many people are searching for that one right thing. Because you see yeah. so many people try zone, way, RP, and they'll do it for like yeah. a month or two and not get exactly what they're looking for or have some. But, but your body is that laboratory, man. And that's right. a, and you need a baseline in whatever diet you're trying. Like mm -hmm. you tried the RP strength. Mm -hmm. You tried one way. Did you, mm -hmm. did you try just a week and then stop? Mm -hmm. No. No, I exactly. Yeah. You went for yeah. it. And you try and now you have that data right right so whether it's rp strength wag or or zone or the keto like you have to try something right right and see how your body reacts to that and then yeah. you can adjust and within all these different domains of diets and prescriptions and whatnot like we often neglect to talk about food yeah. right like was your source of fat grass-fed beef mm -hmm. or was your source of fat like slabs of coconut oil and whatnot right. right right so you know like it's cool that you follow all these different templates and zone this and rp that whatever but like i think the quality of food that's coming in is also super important mm -hmm. right and like that's a big factor too it's like if i'm getting carbohydrates just for the sake of getting hard carbohydrates like what does that look like mm -hmm. is that leafy greens or is that uh refined sugars right they, they both will elicit a different response in your body yeah. you know what i mean so that's something that's often neglected too. It's like people are like, oh, I tried the RP mass template yeah. and I tried to eat fat. Well, like what was the fat that you were eating? You know what I mean? And that's something that's often overlooked. Well, that's a super interesting point because I've seen a lot of people, especially on RP where, or any diet where it's macro based and they'll have their carbohydrates for the day and their carbohydrates are coming from like Lucky Charms yeah. and Gatorade. You see that on out. Instagram all the time, right? It's like, I'm, I'm late on my carbs for the day. This donut's gonna bring me back up to pace, yeah. right? And so what, what's wrong with that? That's clearly not healthy. But from a performance, what a lot of people think like if I'm training 12 hours a day, it doesn't matter. Well, no, I, I think it does matter. And I, I think Greg Glassman was quoted as saying, uh, a particular, some, some cross, elite CrossFitters are the uh, best looking unhealthy people in the world, sick people, yeah. be best looking sick people in the world. Right. So, I mean, you might look great and you might feel great, but it's wreaking havoc inside your body, right? Mm -hmm. That insulin response from when you eat a donut, mm -hmm. it, it's not ideal, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not healthy. Right. It's not healthy, right? And, and I think the term health is often confused with performance, mm -hmm. right? People often sacrifice health to perform better, which mm -hmm. is, I think, so backwards in our in our society yeah. and in our sport even a little bit if we if we look at a short-term window though you know like say someone is in like 22 to 30 and they're on the cusp of making regionals of the games and they're really pushing for it and they want to train all this and the only way they, they think they can get the food in it, like is there some level of like accepting that short term and then trying to clean it up after the turn 30 kind of thing well, or like I, I don't know my challenge to someone like that is like what instead of a donut why can't you just have a sweet potato like if you take your training so seriously and you want to be so good, it's like, yeah. what's, you know, they're, they're, you, you don't know, might have the same carbohydrate density as, as a sweet potato or yeah. whatever that does, or fruit. Right. You know, fruit is a super good source of carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So it might be just like a it, it's, it's the bottom of the pyramid, you yeah. know? So if we look at the, 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 cro the infamous CrossFit pyramid, nutrition's at the bottom of the pyramid. So it's like, if you're taking that much time to perfect your snatch and your muscle ups and your clean and jerk, like take the time to just get in good, healthy sources of carbohydrates. Right, finish it off. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, you, you mentioned something mm -hmm. and it's super popular, I think right now, at least mm -hmm. from what I'm seeing, and I know very little about it, the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. So that's not zone, that's, although we preach high fat, we don't preach exactly what the keto diet is. Cause the keto diet is no carbohydrates except vegetables basically, right? It's just in taking- I think it's like, honestly, I'm not even an expert on, I'm not an expert on, on anything nutrition basically. Yeah. Like, and I don't, I don't think that I don't claim to be. Yeah. Um, and I think that too many people do claim to be. Yeah. And they try to go in and dive into the science and now, okay, the keto is here. And then I hear people trying to explain to me what the keto is and how it like, it affects this and that. And like, like, I just think people try to make it too complicated. Right. 
Like the nutrition world, yes, it is complicated on a molecular level and mm -hmm. we don't understand it because mm -hmm. okay, we didn't study in it. But what we do know and that I think most science out there agrees is that you have to eat real foods mm -hmm. and you have to eat enough to support your life. Right. And not more. So if okay, you so in this, this keto diet and like I, I it's giving great results to some people but it's still relatively new and I don't think there's that much documentation or science out there to support the long-term uh, health. And you know, I, I say that and again, I don't even know. Yeah. So the, the resemblance with the keto diet from what I understand is when you do take the zone diet and you double or triple the fats, you're getting closer to that, that ketogenic diet, which mm -hmm. is a, a, a primary, your, your primary caloric source is fat. fat. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a, again, not an expert on this, but the, I, I think the Atkins diet was basically that, mm -hmm. right? In the nineties, in the when uh, the Atkins diet was like all the rage, mm -hmm. it was like, hey, carbs are the enemy. Like that mm -hmm. famous line from Austin Powers. Yeah. Okay, so basically that. So look, you look at the ketogenic diet, they say, hey, don't eat carbs. Uh, you look at the zone zone diet and they say don't eat refined carbohydrates. You look at the paleo diet and it's like no carbs. Mm -hmm. So like there's always like a the zone diet. Um, you're allowed to eat refined carbohydrates. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah. you're. I mean, you're allowed. You can zone anything basically yeah. if you want. Yeah. I can zone a beer and wings. Yeah. But there's going to be an imbalance at at some point. It's not yet. Yeah, it's not. I think CrossFit's recommendation, like ideal uh, nutrition, would be like a zone, a paleo zone, right? No, no, not a paleo zone. No, because a, a paleo, there's like your source of carbohydrates would not be refined sugars, right? Yeah, but the paleo diet, there's like a wholesale elimination of certain foods, like no gluten, no dairy, no legumes. The zone diet doesn't doesn't say that. It doesn't say you can't eat milk or drink milk. Um, you just have to account for it. Yeah, like you can drink milk if it feels good for you. If it doesn't feel good for me, I, I won't have it in my diet. Um, it just comes back to that baseline of, of trying it out and trying different foods and, and taking them in, in and out. Um, but what I was saying there was just like there's, you know, there's like a common, I feel like there's a common theme with all the diets that actually give people results. Right. And it's low carbohydrate. Yeah. Right. And as soon as you start going low carbohydrate, you, you and you start counting, you realize that, okay, let's say I only have this much carbohydrates to eat in a day. Am I gonna eat, you know, this mountain of vegetables, mm -hmm. or am I gonna eat this little, you know, cupcake? Right. And you can kind of see like it doesn't take someone super intelligent to understand that there's gonna be no, more micronutrients and more, you know, nutritional value in that mountain of vegetables than there is in that cupcake. Speaking of cupcake, yeah, that cupcake is still. We've had a cupcake here. I'm not gonna show it because the audio can't see it, but there's been a cupcake here for like a week and a half now. And it hasn't changed anything. It looks exactly it's the same. It's become a little bit of an experiment. Yeah, just it's like the big mass. See how long it's going to stay. See how long it can sit there. Yeah. Okay, let's segue yeah. a little bit. Um, let's go. We wouldn't be doing performance nutrition justice without talking about supplementation because mm -hmm. a lot of people see it as I need this, I need this, I need this supplement. I need to be taking my like beta alanine, my creatine, my BCAs, and like stacking this with this, and my protein has to be two meals from a shake, and like. I think the commonality from what I've been hearing from you guys is that whole foods the answer. So where do you guys sit on supplementation in general? I don't think you should add anything to your diet until you know exactly what you're eating. Meaning? Meaning if you can't tell me how many carbs of how many grams of carbs, protein, or fat that you've eaten mm -hmm. from real source of food, not mm -hmm. supplements in mm -hmm. a day, don't add in that protein shake. Right. You know, don't add in the yeah, I don't, anything else. Just I don't like, really take protein shakes. No. Because I usually try to, like, I try to first and foremost get that from food. Mm -hmm. But I do take creatine and I do take fish oil. Those are my two go tos. So for protein, what would you say to people who are like the anabolic window? I need to get in I mean, that fast know, digesting. Go eat. So it's like, there's like, like well, meal. so a lot of people's argument is that there's this 30 to 45 minute window after you work out when you're most susceptible to like, protein synthesis, kickstarting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And whey protein is much more easily absorbed than a chicken breast. And so they drink that, they feel like they need to drink that, just kickstart that protein synthesis sooner than waiting for your body to digest the chicken yeah. breast. And all the studies out there on whey protein, I mean, are made by the you know, by the companies who that actually sell the protein. Protein, that make yeah. whey protein. So like, <laughs> just, again, it's like the supplement industry is a little, it's, you know, it's very tough to find companies that, that are actually like, you know, telling the truth mm -hmm. or what is the truth in supplements, mm -hmm. you know? 
Well, I think so. I think the conversation a lot of the time too is that it's it's a one percent, if anything, if mm-hmm. even one percent performance gain that you can get from unlimited supplementation. But as far as like the real food stuff goes, you guys you guys are in agreement that it should be real food first. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, like if you if you're that concerned again, like with with your performance as an athlete and that anabolic window is something that's super important to you Mm -hmm. like pay attention to your nutrition and and, you know i think any nutritionist would agree that whole foods are better than supplementations right Mm -hmm. like supplementations in our society should be a last resort measure Mm -hmm. right like i take a protein shake when i forgot my lunch at home and i don't have a car and i can't get to the farm boy or whatever you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like that's like Mm -hmm. that's when i take a protein shake right um what about the and i mean i think it's safe to say that between Paul, Pete, and myself, and just like several other CrossFitters, like we've heavily relied on supplements, and there's been times where we haven't used supplements for three months. Right. I, like, I don't think we can say that we've noticed a difference. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And again, the only difference that I have seen in my in in the way I look and feel and perform is when I've taken out and added in creatine. Yeah. Same. That's legitimately what I was about to say. Yeah. When yeah. I've added it and I've noticed a difference. Yeah, you feel. I take it out. I don't really notice a difference, but when I add it back in again, yeah. And yeah. here's the thing about that is like every every year almost when I stop taking creatine, it's because I stop competing and I take a little break. Yeah. And then when I ramp it back up, I put the creatine back in. Mm-hmm. So it's like, is it it's a coincidence tell. that you know I'm I'm yeah. training more, so then I see a difference. So, but there is you know, again more documentation out there on on the effects of creatine more than whey protein right right for your, right. For your body but again like th- this is this is basically beyond what i what i know mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. what happens when you actually take these things like i that's why i try to tell people to keep it simple like bring it back to what you know and what what's made for you right like right just real food understand the quantities that you're eating mm-hmm. and then have a baseline for what works for you and then build on that mm-hmm. i think the that's that's as simple as it gets and people are afraid of, of making changes um, because they think it's complicated and that's that's why I think the nutrition world is like like you go to a nutritionist or you go to someone who's talking about you and carbs and they, they, like they, they they confuse you mm-hmm. it's like if you walk in to the gym and I start to teach you how to do a snatch and I talk about the the, the pull and the, the stretch reflex and the hamstrings and this and that. Mm-hmm. No, like let's jump and land with a barbell, see how it goes. Right. And then you build a baseline about how your athlete is moving and then you can build on that. Mm-hmm. So that's why like, keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then once you get, because people will be interested here, especially from your perspective, yeah, yeah. at your level then, does the fancy stuff start to come into play at all? Like, is there anything fancy that you've taken in the past that you swear by? I mean, creatine we just talked about, but that's even not that fancy because you get that from red meat, but like the beta alanines and like the pre-workouts and the BCAAs, like what about that stuff? Is there any benefit? Deer antler velvet. Deer antler <laughs> velvet. Honestly, I don't know if I'm the right person like to ask that, like, man. like squeegee stuff that you it's see? like a spray, yeah. 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 <laughs> Lucas Parker took it for a bit. I've seen that. I don't know what that was supposed to do, but. It's supposed to increase your IGF-1. Hmm. Insulin growth factor. Yeah. I, I think it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting pretty close to. Anyway, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. Like, I, I tend to think like a lot of it is kind of, you know, Makes bullshit. You and that's it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I like I said. Like, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask. Yeah. Like, I know there's some really high level guys that, that take everything under the sun. You know. Yeah. That's, that's legal. Yeah. Um, and, and like, does it help them? Maybe, you know, it, and I know some guys that just don't take anything mm-hmm. and just eat, mm-hmm. um, or just creatine or yeah. just fish oil or just, you know, one protein shake after mm-hmm. the workout. Um, and they don't, they don't worry about that, that anabolic window or mm-hmm. whatever you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I take um, caffeine pills. That's another one I, I left off the table, but I do take caffeine pills. <laughs> usually 300 milligrams. Is that why you never want a coffee when I ask you if you want a coffee? Yeah, because I usually, I've probably had a caffeine pill at that yeah. point in the day. Interesting. But my caffeine intake is very regulated. Yeah. Like I can tell you exactly how much caffeine is in my blood at any given point in the day. Whoa, yeah. in your blood? <laughs> well, based on what I've consumed. <laughs> you know the transformation of that pill to your blood? Well, like how much yeah. your blood is actually absorbing? I, I mean, I don't know the, the science <laughs> of it, but... You need to bring Janet You know how many, how many milligrams you've taken, you've exactly. ingested, yeah. Yeah, so like I know, Nate, if you get me a coffee yeah. at one o'clock today, yeah. I'm not going to sleep tonight. 
Right. So I, I have it's, it's timed. It's it's. I drank one at like eight last night. Yeah, I drink coffee. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, I I think caffeine is something that you can. Uh, like you develop your body develops a mm-hmm. tolerance to caffeine, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I I'm super specific on how I take caffeine. Like mm-hmm. I even have one day of every week, usually Thursdays, where I don't have any coffee or caffeine. Right. Um, and that's actually similar to how I help prepare Pete for regionals this year. Mm-hmm. So that when he was taking the caffeine, it was having a better uh, impact on his right. on his body. There's actually probably more research out there on the effect of caffeine in your training than there is on beta alanine or yeah. I think there's quite timing. a bit on creatine. I think creatine, creatine is, more is like research. Yeah. research. Yeah. yeah, I just mean like as a stimulant. You know, yeah. caffeine yeah. is a stimulant. Yeah, makes yeah. yeah. it feel good. I try played. I experimented experimented with caffeine timing in 2015 I remember 2016 at regionals mm-hmm. my trainer that was there his name is Richard Gregory and he he helped me out with with timing when I was taking my coffee when mm-hmm. the window was like 45 minutes before your event right um, and it was a lot of caffeine yeah 400 yeah. milligrams so it was before a, your yes. 30 minutes before your event yeah and it was, it was like you can't you can't even drink that because you'll be so your bladder will be so full you'll need yeah. to pee so it's like have a coffee with some caffeine pills, you know, and I, I played around with that and and look, like at the end of the day, I still didn't qualify that year. So it's yeah. like, you know, I look at I look at things that I could be doing differently. But how'd you do that year? 2016? Yeah. Finished eighth? No, Richard was 2015, no? He was there 2015, 2016, 2017. But the year with the caffeine where he was like, take 400? I remember that year in the back. 16. Was it not, was it 16? Yeah. I thought it was 15. Yeah. Anyway, so it's, you know, it depends. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think, well, I think you kind of, you hit it, like, in the question of at your level, because there's people who do and there's people who don't, and you don't, and you're at one of the highest levels you can be in our sport, and mm-hmm. so I think that's the answer. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and here's, here's one thing to add is, like, um, I have trained on days where I haven't had any caffeine and days where I have had caffeine, and my performance has not improved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, on a day where I haven't had caffeine, and for example, we use Fran as an example, mm-hmm. and I do a Fran, it's like, oh shit, I got like the same time as I would if I was I was supplementing with caffeine. Right. So it's not like the end of the world, you know? Yeah. George is joining us. George is joining yeah, us. George is joining us. Sorry. No, it's a perfect closeout. I think we're just about at that 30 minute mark. There it's about go. time for us to work out, yeah. go to class. Doing the class one today. Sick. Well, that's good. Anything else you guys want to add before we go? I think, it, I think we hit everything I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I just wanted, yeah, exactly. Like the, the, I just said, what I mean, dude, you want to talk about his nutrition? Milk. Milk. All milk. Yeah. That's awesome. All I right. Think, uh, to close, it's just like, keep it simple. And, and before you start like trying, you know, to adjust your, your everything or, you know, trying to adjust the, the amount of grams of, of carbs, protein, fat, like try one thing, mm-hmm. try one thing for, for as long as you can and see the, see the changes. Sick. Yeah. And if you guys, if you guys are members of NCR, remember our coaches are always willing to answer any questions you guys might have. So. Mm-hmm. And if you're at an affiliate, I'm sure any of your coaches yeah, there would be yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah. Or send us a message. Yeah. What do I do? Okay. Sick. That's been time. That's been AMRAP 30, the NCR podcast. See you next time. Thanks guys.